Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Alan's Cloud. My name is Alan and in this video I'm going to give you some uh, steps to take if you're running into blue screen of death errors in Windows 10 after you've built a new Ryzen PC. So let's get right to it. So I recently built a new uh, daily driver PC because um, my old Mac Pro from uh, I bought it in 2009 it, it just wasn't cutting it anymore. Um, so I went to Best Buy and I picked up a uh, Ryzen 5 3600 chip, uh, an Asus Strix B450F gaming motherboard, uh, and uh, some you know RAM that they just had on the shelf there. It was 16 gigs uh, DDR4, that's what that motherboard takes. Um, and I, I picked the RAM um, at random. It was just basically what they had on the shelf, and it was, you know, honestly the cheaper um, of the priced ones that they had. Um, so I thought the only difficulty that I was going to have might be the whole will it, um, you know, will the Gen 3 chip work in that motherboard? Because I know that's been a problem uh, for other folks, but uh, they fixed that. I've actually uh, I had done my research, my homework on that one. Uh, and I knew it wouldn't be a problem in, in on the new board uh, box right there in Best Buy. It says that it's ready for that chip. So it wasn't going to be an issue. So my build went perfectly fine. Uh, but I think I got pretty lucky in that because a few weeks, weeks later, I was helping my son with his build. And he was building pretty much the exact same thing. It was another Ryzen 5 3600. But he had bought the parts over time. And the only thing that was really different was the RAM. But... Uh, we ran into several issues and, uh, you know, in doing all of the research, I went and I looked on uh, some forums and, and looked at a bunch of different posts about, you know, the questions that people were, were asking about this very problem. And uh, so I, I, I feel like, you know, some of you out there are running into this issue as we speak, if, if I ran into it in these in, in this way. So uh, that said, I, I did get his machine up and running and stable. And I think if you try some of the steps that we're going to cover in this video here today, it might actually help you. Uh, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the like button if this video helps you out. Um, you know, so let's um, let's get right to it. So to avoid these issues and what uh, looks like RAM incompatibility problems, um, here's the short version, right? I, I know I tend to be wordy about these things. In your BIOS, number one, update the BIOS to the latest version and then reboot. When it comes back up, set the BIOS to the defaults and then reboot again. Um, third, hit F11 and go into easing tuning and uh, set it to gaming slash media editing mode and then reboot. Four, set your RAM to the uh, AI Tweaker uh, DOCP standard. And then, um, you know, this next step is, is pretty optional. But you can run memtest86 to see and, and, and make sure that there aren't any errors. And then, uh, then you're going to actually install Windows 10. So finally, when you've got uh, Windows 10 up and running, don't do any of the updates. Run, you know, go to the ASUS website, uh, get the chipset drivers, and you've got to install them in the right order. Um, the most recent one is going to be a small one. Uh, I think it was 75 megabytes. Uh, then the one right below that is actually around 357, 350 megabytes. Um, it actually sh tells you that you need to run the big one first and then run that latest one second. Uh, and then after that, you can run all of your Windows updates and, and install of your drivers, that sort of thing. So that was the short version. So for those of you uh, who want more details on it, uh, you know, and some some other tips that I've got about, uh, you know, SATA on this particular motherboard. Here's the long version of that, right? So first, um, we're going to actually uh, take a look at how you update the BIOS the easy way uh, before you install Windows. Uh, so we're going to go over and look at the motherboard manual. Hang on one second. Let's see here. Okay, so this is the actual motherboard itself. This is the uh, Republic of Gaming Strix B450F Gaming, right? Um, it says right here, uh, although the motherboard really isn't updated, it says right here that the Ryzen uh, 3000 desktop uh, will work in this and the, and the new chip is going to work, okay? So um, 
the where uh, the in the box you're actually going to find the the manual and the things that I'm going to show you are actually just the digital version of, of that right so uh, if you don't have the the manual here under support if you click on that manual and document uh, right here is the English version and uh, I'm going to show you several different pages of that here in the next few minutes right uh, so let's see here. The first part of this is is updating the BIOS the easy way. So this particular BIOS has um, this Easy Flash option in it, right? Um, so this Easy Flash utility, as long as you've plugged in a network uh, cable, a LAN cable, into the motherboard itself, and and the thing is posting. Obviously, you've got to get to that point. I'm not covering all that. Uh, plug a network cable in go in here and find this easy flash option right uh let's see here uh, advanced mode on the bios setup go to the tool menu select asus easy flash utility then you're actually going to do this via internet so long as you've got that other um, cord plugged in and uh, the, the mode that you're going to select on that is uh, via dhcp i think you're further down yeah so this is this is the option here dhcp uh, it'll pull an ip address from your router It'll go out and it'll find that uh, latest BIOS version. And it's very important that you do that first because uh, the, the BIOS version that was shipped with the motherboard is so old that when I tried to run the Windows 10 installer, it, it gave me several errors and I, I couldn't actually complete the install process. That may not happen to you. Maybe you get a version that's got a, a newer version of the BIOS, but I think this is still a very good fundamental step to start from. Uh, so once that's done, you're going to reboot it, uh, and then here, uh, this is this is one particular page. This is actually the AI tweaker page of the BIOS itself. But when when you go into the BIOS, you're going to go in here uh, to exit that particular button right there, uh, and then you're going to follow these instructions here in 3.10 of of the manual. Load optimized defaults. Right. Once you do that, it confirms it, and then it'll reboot again and you're going to want to hit delete or, or if, whatever it is and uh, mainly just hit delete get into the bios again and uh the next step you're going to do is is go into easy tuning wizard right so you hit f11 once you're in the bios and it'll bring up this easy tuning wizard and what you're going to do is you're going to actually select this uh it, it's here on the daily computing option so you're going to select this gaming and uh, media editing mode and, and really what this does, it tweaks a couple of the values uh, for the voltages, for the RAM and the CPU. And what it ended up doing on my son's computer was uh, it's a, a Ryzen 5 3600 chip. So um, uh, 3600 megahertz, it actually clocked it to 3700. So only 100 megahertz difference, not a big deal. It's not going to melt anything down. Uh, but I think it also uh, affects the RAM voltage that is used for the machine itself. So we're doing this first, then it'll reboot, and then you're actually uh, going to go back here and, and um, this particular page, now we're actually on the right uh, setting, it, in the AI tweaker portion, you're going to select this DOCP standard, and that should actually uh, query your RAM, and it'll pop up with all the right timings that go along for your particular sticks that you've got uh, installed. Uh, and then you're going to actually go to exit, save and exit, and reboot again. I know a lot of rebooting, but the system's very fast, so it shouldn't shouldn't take all that much. So once you've set all the defaults, um, and and you've reset it, you know pretty much it's it's ready to go from the BIOS's perspective. So one of the things that I suggest doing next is you actually go here to this uh, Memtest 86 website, and you download their free version of this test. Now this is kind of optional at this point, but what this is going to do is if you run this test and it takes four hours to do it, um, basically everything you've done in the BIOS up to this point, um, you know, should be the right settings to get you where you need to be to install Windows 10. Um, but if there are actually any problems with the settings that you've got in there, or there's any problems with the RAM itself, this mem test will uh, actually, you know, test all of that out and, and really hammer that RAM and, and, and give you a good benchmark as to whether or not uh, any, any of the, the settings in your BIOS that we've just done or the RAM itself are going to be an issue. So rule all that out 
with this test. You can skip this and go straight to the install of Windows 10, but uh, that's on you and, and you can always come back and run this later on. It does uh, take quite some time, but this is what I suggest in, in this order. Uh, so the next piece here, you go after you've installed Windows 10 at this point, uh, don't do any of the Windows 10 updates. The first thing that you want to do once you're actually at the, you know, the main screen of the, the Windows 10 operating system, it's all done installing, is come back here to the uh, uh, Asus website and come down here to the, uh, the Drivers and Tools section. Choose your operating system, and we're going to pick uh, Windows 10 64-bit. And uh, you're going to come all the way down here to Chipset. So uh, this is the chipset driver, right? So this is one of those things that they've tweaked to make sure that, uh, you know, ev everything uh, hardware wise with the Ryzen and the, this particular mother motherboard works correctly with Windows. Uh, but an important piece that, um, you know, that either my son or I, when we set this up, I, I didn't notice right here, it says that you've actually got to uh, basically install the 19.10.xx uh, version before you run this version and so you have to click on see all downloads and you can see that this is the 19.10.16 the latest version and you notice that size difference i mean this is um you know what the kind of was the dead giveaway for this you got to install this one first and then once it's done i don't know if it you know reboots the machine or not but i would i would reboot windows uh, and then install this version here once that's done, you're uh, pretty much good to go. You can run all of the other driver updates. You can run any of the other Windows updates you need to at that point. Um, and um, one of the other things that's, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, an additional tip on this topic, uh, I ran an NVMe hard drive uh, in slot one of the, the uh, NVMe slots on this particular motherboard. There are two. Uh, but I also had another solid state uh, drive that I wanted him to use for storage. Um, and I couldn't get it to work at first. And uh, so what happens here is you actually have these connectors, these three connectors on the motherboard. And you've got one, three, five, six, four, and two. And uh, what I had done is I had a uh, CD drive uh, in three and I had a um, another hard drive, uh, you know, spinning physical drive. In, in this one here and uh, so that extra solid state drive I tried to plug in here and then I tried to plug in here so it's these these first two but because I was using that NVMe drive it, it wouldn't let me so the the solid state drive just wouldn't show up in the the BIOS to be a, a selectable option uh, and I was looking out for it and I, I couldn't find it so one of the things that I ended up doing because I was using these two when I hadn't plugged the SATA cable into four uh, thinking that you know probably maybe it's using those the you know PCIe maybe it's using those channels lanes whatever you want to call it and sure enough as soon as I plugged in uh, the solid state drive here it actually appeared in the BIOS and then I could go in and format it in Windows um, so at this point your system should be relatively stable about as good as it's going to get uh, if you run into any other blue screen of death errors you're going to have to investigate them but hopefully this process has ruled out the RAM itself and the motherboard chipset drivers. Uh, and that's pretty much it for this uh, particular video today. Um, if this video has helped you out, please give it a thumbs up. And again, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much to everyone who's done that up to this point. I see my subscriber numbers uh, increasing every day and it's fantastic, I, ha I have to say. So um, you all have a good one and remember, there's no such thing as a cloud, it's just someone else's computer.